Now we'll talk about the alveolar gas equation. It's used to calculate how much oxygen there is in the alveoli, or in technical terms, the partial pressure of oxygen in the alveoli. And we're going to write that as P big A O2, where the big A means alveolus, whereas little a, like in P little a O2, means arterial. Why do we care how much oxygen is in the alveolus? Mainly to calculate AA gradients, which we're going to talk about later. So the equation is as follows. The amount of oxygen in the alveoli is equal to how much oxygen is in the air we breathe in, that's this first term, minus how much oxygen is consumed by the body, that's the second term. Now let's break each of these terms down into more detail. In the first one, FiO2 is the fraction of the gas we're breathing that's composed of oxygen, and that's usually around 0.21 for room air. PATM is the atmospheric pressure, which is 760 millimeters of mercury at sea level. And FiO2 times PATM would then be the partial pressure of oxygen in the gas right before we breathe it in. So if this first term represents how much oxygen is in the air we breathe in, why isn't this whole first term just FiO2 times PATM? And where is this PH2O term coming from? Well, without going into too much detail, this PH2O represents water vapor because our bodies are very moist, and by the time the air we breathe in reaches the trachea, it becomes fully saturated by water vapor, and that water vapor dilutes the gas, so we have to subtract it. And the water vapor at body temperature is around 47 millimeters of mercury. Okay, so this whole first term then is the partial pressure of oxygen of air right before it enters the alveoli. And the second term is a clever indirect way to represent the amount of oxygen that's then taken out of the alveolus and consumed. That might seem weird because PaCO2 is talking about CO2 and not O2. So how does this work? In brief, it's because O2 is converted to CO2 by metabolic reactions in the body. So if you know the amount of CO2 excreted, then you know how much O2 is consumed. And how do you calculate how much CO2 is excreted? Well, there's no CO2 in the air we breathe in. So all the CO2 in the alveolus is CO2 that's going to be excreted. So that means if we know the alveolar CO2, then we know how much O2 was consumed. But this term here has a little a, so it's referring to arterial CO2 and not alveolar CO2. So what's the deal with that? Well, they're actually the same. And this is something to remember. Arterial CO2 is equal to alveolar CO2. That's because arterial blood is blood that has just passed through the lungs and has not been tampered with yet. And in terms of CO2, that blood came into perfect equilibrium with the alveoli because CO2 diffuses really well in fluid. So where we have arterial CO2, we could equally well write alveolar CO2. The reason we're putting arterial is because that's the one we're gonna measure in the hospital. That's the one we're gonna measure from an arterial blood sample. Okay, so arterial CO2 gives us a sense of how much O2 is used up. But then what is this R? Well, let me ask you a question. For every oxygen molecule that's consumed, how many carbon dioxide molecules are produced? And you might have thought it was one, but actually it depends what you're metabolizing. If you're metabolizing carbohydrates, then indeed, every oxygen you burn up creates a carbon dioxide. But for fats and proteins, the oxygen molecules you use up can go into other things like H2O, which has oxygen in it, and urea, which also has oxygen in it. And the result is that on average, for a Western diet, metabolizing one oxygen molecule produces 0.8 carbon dioxide molecules. And so that's what this R is. We call it the respiratory coefficient, and it's equal to 0.8 for the average Western diet. Okay, so we didn't exactly derive this formula, but hopefully talking about it the way we did helps you understand it a little bit. And if not, that's honestly okay. Just be familiar with it. It appears very complicated, but for patients breathing ambient air at sea level, it can be simplified a lot because FiO2 is 0.21, atmospheric pressure is 760, and pH2O is 47. So if you work out the math, this first term becomes about 150. And then the equation can be simplified to just 150 minus PaCO2 divided by 0.8. And dividing by 0.8 is actually the same as multiplying by 1.25, so sometimes people prefer to write it like this since it can be easier to plug numbers in. And so in sum, from 10,000 feet, the general idea here is if I draw someone's ABG and measure the amount of carbon dioxide in their blood, I can plug it into this formula to deduce the amount of oxygen in their alveoli.